Hi, I'm Greg with Rev Robotics, and today I'm talking to you about our brand new expansion hub. This is the new controller for the first tech challenge this year, and I want to show you some of its features. So first of all, we've, re we've looked at all the ports and connections that you would make on this controller. So every single one of these ports and connectors is an industry standard where we've chosen things that are both extremely robust and also very cost affordable to help keep the price of this controller down. Starting with the power connection, this is an XT30 connector. They're very common, used in quadcopters and hobby. They're a high current connector, but it's also really low cost. So we use these connectors on both our hubs. The cables that link multiple hubs together, our power switch, and even things like our battery. Moving on to our motors. Our motors all use a JST VH cable. The JST VH cable is a locking connector, so when you plug it in, you'll know that it's guaranteed to be secure with every single one of your, your ports. With all our entire system, we use the same port on both ends of the wire, so if you have a Rev Core hex motor or a Rev HD hex motor, you'll be able to plug the wire in either way without having to worry about polarity or differences. Next to each one of the the VH cables for motors is the corresponding encoder port. We have a dedicated encoder port for each one of your motors and that gives you an opportunity to easily use the sensors and encoders that come with your motors. On the bottom are six servo ports that you can use to power your servos of any type. This is a standard a standard servo connection so you can just plug your servos right in or you can plug them in through an extension cable. Next to that you have a 5 volt power auxiliary rail for powering external sensors. Sometimes sensors and other devices need a little bit of extra power and you can pull power right from that port for any purpose. Going up the, the side of your controller, the first ports that you've got are your analog ports. There are two ports but there are four actual inputs. So you can use up to four analog sensors per, per expansion hub that you have. Each one of these ports uses a JST cable, it's a four pin JST PH cable, which we use on also our encoders and all of our other sensor ports. The next line of ports up are our digital ports. And we have four digital ports with eight digital input or output IO, which allow you to connect up to eight sensors. You can do this by individual cables or using Y splitter cables to each port. The next ports on the expansion hub are the I2C ports. You have four of them, and each one of these ports is actually a different I2C universe, meaning you can use a sensor with a dedicated address on each one of these ports without having to deal with conflicting addresses. You can also extend off of each one of these so you can use a lot of different I2C sensors. The next ports on your expansion hub are your RS-485. This is used as a communication standard to connect multiple hubs together. You can connect a whole bunch of hubs together, but for the first tech challenge, you're only going to be using two on your robot. The RS-485 uses a three-pin JST cable, and those, are, those come with your expansion hubs. In addition to the ports, which are all locking, easy, and low cost, we also have some internal protection features inside of the expansion hub so that you'll have a better time when you're using this on the robot. Every single individual port on the expansion hub has an ESD protection device. So you're not going to have a static disconnect problem on many of your ports the way that you might have with other similar systems. We also have a full reverse polarity protection for your main power. So if you happen to wire your expansion hub up backwards or set up your battery incorrectly, you're not going to blow up your entire hub by hooking it up. Your hub will just stop working, and then when you fix it, it'll come back to life. One of the other protection features that we have on the expansion hub is on the servo ports. Each pair of ports is actually protected by a PTC, or a thermal protection device. So if you happen to draw too much current, those ports will just shut down, rather than you doing any damage to the hub itself. This hub's really designed to be a robust part of your robotic system that you'll be able to use season and season out. On the back side of your hub, we've got a mini USB port. The mini USB port is what you'll be using to connect this to your phone. 
You'll also be able to use this mini USB port to hook up to your computer, both for directly driving, but also updating your firmware in the field. We'll be posting firmware updates as we advance the device over time, and you'll be able to get more information for that on our website. Another feature that we've done with the expansion hub to try to, to raise the bar for everybody's robot is we've included inside an internal measurement unit, or IMU, that everybody can use access. This is a nine axis IMU, so you'll get acceleration and gyro plus a digital compass in all directions, and you'll be able to access that directly in the code from day one. Integrated to your expansion hub, you also have current sense. So within your software, you'll be able to tell the current of any of your individual devices, whether it be your motors or servos, to tell what you're doing. This can become really important as power management in a current limited system will do you quite good about building advanced machines. For more information about your expansion hub, please visit our website, where you can also register your product, sign up for updates to get firmware notifications, and view more guides. For more videos like this, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you.